the the premise of this video is is learning how to trust your heart again. Because if you don't, it will beat you down. It, the fear will take over. The fear is constantly like a fire that's trying to get out of control. But if you can conquer it, it goes away. That's the other magical part about it. It's not a matter of just trying to ignore it and you got to live the rest of your life with heart pains and heart fluttering. No. These things are very anticipatory. This goes back to my talks on catastrophizing pain signals and anxiety signals. We, be, we become... Um, hyper vigilant you know we we tend to expect these symptoms and then by sheer expecting them we we more or less uh, manifest them so i'll give you an example i uh, a year off of benzo i i join a gym and i start walking on the treadmill every day and almost immediately as soon as i get on the treadmill as soon as my heart rate just started to get up the slightest bit first off i'm, I'm grabbing those little pa paddles you know so you can see your heart rate as <laughs> i'm you know I'm neurotic like that, at the, especially at the time anyway. I was, was uh, I'm at 120, 130. Is that too high? I'm Google searching. Is 120, how high can I get my heart rate? You know, it's madness already. So that that I had to fix. I, that I had to learn to go, what? You're being, you know, you're being obsessive here. You don't need to hold the heart rate monitor panels. You're okay. Stop doing that. Uh, second thing is I had to start walking um, very slowly and I had to learn to build off everything I was doing. It was a constant building off this. So I would go five minutes, let's say two miles an hour on the, tr on the treadmill. Not, not fast. That's just light walking. And as soon as my heart would start fluttering, I would turn it off. Then I had to learn to push through that. I said, well, just maybe lower it a little bit. But try to ignore it. Try not to give it any energy, you know, mental energy. Not focus on it. Don't rush to the paddles. Don't jump off here. Do five every day for the first couple of weeks. Then move it up to 10, 10 minutes a day for the next couple of weeks, and then move it up to 20. And slowly but surely, what happens is, is you learn to trust your your heart. You say, uh, okay, well, I, I started at five and I and I had some heart fluttering and this and that. But now look at it, it's been two months later. I've never had a heart problem. I've never had any major episode of anything. And now I'm up to 20 minutes on the on the treadmill every day. And I'm walking at two and a half miles per hour. So it's a gradual rebuilding. And of the trust in our body. And this was a year off of benzos, you know. I mean, this is how much, how persistent these kind of maladaptive behaviors and these faulty irrational thinking processes can cling to us. That even when I'm off the drug, most of my symptoms are gone at this point. And they're still lingering some health anxiety underneath there. They're still going, well, how do I know my heart's so good? Okay, well, I went and had an EKG. I had blood work. They said I'm great health. But I don't know, you know, that's the thinking. Um, but again, you have to beat it. You have to beat it by learning to trust your heart again, by getting out there and systematically pushing the bar. And it will take time and you will come to learn to trust your, your heart again. And then with that trust, you'll see these, these symptoms of palpitations. They just fall away, which makes you wonder the entire time how much of this stuff is really just in our heads. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and listening. Please click the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content. And be sure to check out my book on Amazon, The Powers Manual, Benzel Guide to Recovery.